Hello and welcome. In this video, I am going to show you how you can upgrade your Laravel 5.6 to Laravel 5.7. Before you start watching the video, I just want to tell you if your application is big or you have already completed your application, this video is just introduction to upgrading. So what we are going to upgrade is our own application here, which we have just started. So if you have uh, too much complexity and functionality in your application, make sure when you are watching the video, there are so many things you have to do it yourself. We are not going to do all of those things. So if you go to the documentation of Laravel, going to prologues and upgrade guides, it will show you different way from different version of Laravel that you are upgrading. So currently this is Laravel 5.7. So what we are going to upgrade is the first one from 5.6 to 5.7. So it will yeah take 10 to yeah 15 minutes, but basically for us, this is easy. First of all, what you are going to do is you are going to change your uh, Laravel framework version in the composer.json plus the Laravel passport. Because we use Laravel passport, you have to change it to 5.7. Laravel passport is one of the official packages in Laravel. You know this one. So that's why whenever the new version of Laravel come, they will upgrade the version of the passport the packages also. So this is what you are going to do. So if you go, go to your application here, you know in your require here we have the laravel framework and here is the version you can write and for laravel passport you can write the version 7 or above and then what you can do is run your uh, composer if i come here just open the co command line here or if you can open it in the explorer window it is going to be fine we open the terminal here and then you can what you can do is you can write composer update if you run this command it is going to check out your composer.json if they have any new file here any new version it's going to compare that with the uh, packages in the uh, online and then it will update all the packages that you have here including laravel framework so after you complete that one what you can do is you can go through uh, the things you have written that they have written in the upgrade guide here so many of these stuff here we didn't use that so far uh, if i come I scroll down from here you know the register met method they say that the likelihood of the impact is very low means most people do not change it if you change it so what you can do is you can just uh, use this one so they said that this method is going to accept another argument so that's why they have to tell you that if you have ever used the register here so you should better change it uh, plus the artisan here is the job we have not used any job or queue in our application yet that's why if you have anyone the possibility is low still you have to check that for the asset of course this is the directory if you uh, have ever installed any level 5.7 application you don't have the asset directory i think yeah the asset is not here so if i come to our application going to resources we have assets here but if you are using the php 5 points uh, the component the level 5.7 what you do you do not have is the asset folder so all your js your uh, fonts your images it will be in the resources directory by default so in our application you don't need to do that one what it is going to do basically if you open your webpack here your webpack file webpack.mix.js these are going to say we are going to the resources assets js and then we compile them to the public so if you have ever moved this file make sure you update uh, your pack, uh, webpack file here so that when you compile your file it is going to look for the right directory but if you are inst installing any new new laravel application you don't need to do this one so if i scroll down a little bit this is the another one for the authentication also they have some updates but the possibility is low this is for middleware we have not used this one plus most of the uh, the things they have here we didn't use and for the password reset also they have another uh, trade for that one of course we didn't use any of this stuff uh, i mean they say that if you have changed that they say if you are overwriting this method you should update the method signature we didn't change anything so we don't need to worry about this stuff and you can scroll down and see all this stuff but if i come here i think for the 
yeah for the get contract here we will use that in the future videos but they have a new way of authorization and the uh, possibility is very low because most people have not used this one in the future videos of course we are going to apply the acl that's why it is important to know that some of the changes have impact in our application also so in the billet of course this one is very high and if you have ever used or now what you can do is you can use the dollar sign dollar sign here not dollar sign the question mark question mark here this is new in php 7.3 i think or 7.2 yeah that's why they say that we are going to use that in laravel so this is a lot better this is equivalent to or and plus for the cache this is very high i think yeah the likelihood of impact you should create this directly in your application so what you can do is yeah a new data directory has been added to storage this one so of course you should have added this one the data directory and plus finally add that to your get ignore file if i come here we have a get ignore that this cache should be ignored it, it sits in the let me see storage framework cache if i come to our application here is the letter i start and if i go to storage here is the directory we have storage yes framework and then cache here is framework and then cache and then you have the data if you can if you check at this one yeah they already create that one but what you can do is you can add that one to your uh, git ignore file if you have if you use the github for uh, for this one what you can do is you can just duplicate one of this line you can say this is going to framework and then cache this is the directory and then we have a data do not look in this directory for any changes so you can save that one and that's good to go and for the carbon of course we have not used the carbon library yet in our application these are a lot lower uh, things that will happen for the contract no we didn't use any of this stuff we just look at for the high one the one which is said the possibility is very high these are low of course we didn't use most of them but if your application is big make sure you just uh, check out some of the high possibilities that might happen you for your application so this is i think it for our application this one is also high, and high yeah for the redirection what you can do is you can pass the third parameter here for the http code status which is which is cool and if you have ever used redirect you can pass the third parameter and uh, what else we have to do these are medium for the validator we have not we didn't need to do any of this one we didn't use the nested validation rule that's why and you can check out that this is easy like you can scroll down and see what you have used in your application and then you can go and change it so i hope it has been informative for you if you have any question feel free to ask below the video and then in the future videos we will continue uh, our application by working on acl or access level list uh, for our user so thank you for watching and see you in the next video